Hey everybody, Damien from Bay Ridge DIY here. I found two Model 40 Daisy Red Rider BB guns. These date back to like the 1940s. Thought it'd be pretty cool for my daughters to have these uh, for first guns to start learning how to shoot. Um, I'm not a big gun enthusiast or a gun nut or anything like that, but I do think that gun safety is pretty important and what better way to learn than with a Red Rider Daisy BB gun. Uh, pretty cool. I'm going to do the handle on the stock in alder, clean it up and re-blue the barrel and the ends and everything. Let me show you how we do it. The first thing I did was remove all of the wooden parts off of the gun. The handle is held on by one screw and a retaining clip. The stock is held on by a screw and one bolt. Make sure to save the spring that keeps the trigger in place when you take the stock out. We will save the stock and the front handle to use as a template. We'll be replacing it with alder. I remove the inside of the barrel by simply twisting it counterclockwise. After years of neglect, you can see that the barrel of this gun is very rusty. I didn't want to soak it in any solutions because I wasn't going to take out the center components. So I used a brass wire wheel and an angle grinder. Once I was done removing the rust with the wire wheel, I removed the trigger and the lever. It was one bolt and nut for the lever and one bolt for the trigger. The brass wire wheel did a great job removing the rust and most of the bluing from the original stock. We will still use a solvent cleaner to remove any excess rust on the barrel. I am using Birchwood Casey's Perma Blue Liquid Gun Blue Kit. It's a three step process. The first step is using the blue and rust remover. I apply the blue and rust remover with a sponge. After letting it sit for about a minute, I come back with some fine steel wool and clean it up, then rinse it with water to remove any residue. I apply the cleaner degreaser with a clean shop rag. I clean it very well getting into all of the nooks and crannies of the gun. I then wipe it clean with a wet towel. After wiping it clean, you will want to change gloves and not touch the barrel with your fingers. The oil and grease on your fingers will leave marks in the barrel when bluing. The next step is to add the perma blue. You use this with the applicator provided in the kit. Make sure to get all over the gun, watching for drips and runs. Once this is applied, you can let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute, but not much longer than that. You can apply this two or three times. I applied it two times on this to get a little bit darker finish. Once you get the darkness you want after one, two, or three layers, you can wipe off the gun with a clean shop rag. I followed all the same steps for the trigger and the lever. I also used my wire wheel in a drill press, just so I wouldn't nick my fingers with the angle grinder. Now onto my favorite part of the project, making a new stock. This stock was three quarters of an inch thick. I found some scrap alder that I had laying around the shop and traced the old stock onto the new piece of alder. After transferring the shape onto the new alder board, I cut it out with my jigsaw. I make sure to stay just outside of the lines. I'll clean it up later with my sander. I used my drill press and a small barrel sander to clean up the saw marks and straighten the edges. 
Once the edges were squared, I used a 3 quarter inch bearing roundover bit to give the edges a profile. It matches the original stock pretty well. Once I was done with the rounded profile, I used a downward spiral bit to router a slot where the lever sits. For the front hand grip, I glued together two pieces of 3 quarter inch thick alder lumber. I cut it down on the table saw to an inch and 3 eighths wide. I then brought it over to the planer and milled it down to an inch and a half tall, leaving the seam on the bottom side. I now need to cut out the new handle to fit around the barrel and the BB chamber. I use the old handle as a template and set the saw blade till it just reaches the inside of the old barrel. I then take several passes on the table saw with an eighth inch kerf blade. Using the old handle again, I make marks where the center needs to be cut out. You can see on the old handle the different layers that need to be cut out. I then make a mark on both sides of the board, where the narrow part of the barrel meets the wider part of the barrel. I use a piece of masking tape to mark where my table saw blade goes back into the table saw insert. This is a good reference for the two marks that I made earlier, so I don't cut too far into the board. I take multiple passes on the table saw with an eighth inch kerf blade, stopping at the end of the masking tape each time. You could set up a dado blade for this also, but I found it faster just to adjust the fence an eighth inch each time. Back at the router table, I take a half inch cove bit and make the radiuses for the inside where the barrel sits into the handle. One end of the handle is narrower and slightly tapered from the other end of the handle. I use the old handle to mark the curves on both ends of the new handle. I use my 3 inch wide belt sander to get the handle to its rough shape. It's easy to taper it with the belt sander if you're careful and you watch what you're doing. Once I have the shape of the handle, I clean up any of the sanding marks with some 100 grit sandpaper, working my way back down to about 220 grit sandpaper on both the handle and the stock. You need to drill a hole in the end of the stock that faces the trigger. This holds the spring that keeps the trigger in place when loading the gun. I used a razor blade and a file to cut a small recess in the end of the handle where the metal clip holds the front to the barrel of the gun. Make sure not to take off too much wood here because the metal retainer has to fit very snug to the wood and the barrel. I replace the barrel insert, turning it clockwise into the barrel tube. A little grease on the threads doesn't hurt in case we gotta take this back out another day. I put the trigger and the lever back on the gun, making sure not to tighten these bolts too tight it can cause the trigger and the lever to bind if they're over tightened. After the trigger and the lever are replaced, I put the stock back on the gun. I drill a 5 32 hole, 
Drilling from both sides so I don't blow out any of the wood when I push the drill bit through. The last step for me was to spray the stock and the handle with some lacquer. I just used a spray can lacquer because it was such a small project. It really brought out the grain of the wood using a clear coat instead of a stain. So I finished up the Red Rider BB gun project. It turned out really good, really simple to do. Uh, a couple tools, belt sander, drill press. If you had an oscillating sander and a bandsaw, it might make it a little bit easier for cutting out some of the parts. Uh, the components of these are not real complicated. The lever goes in. I didn't take any of the center components out, just the lever and the trigger. A uh, really easy project to do, like I said. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, Bay Ridge DIY. If you like our videos, check us out on Instagram, Bay Ridge DIY. Till next time, have a good one.